All right, welcome back. Okay, so we're going to continue at uh, 9.6. So trigo functions, okay, questions on trigo functions. So you all have learned about trigo, your sokatoa. If we consider this x, y, and r, okay, if according to this uh, triangle, your sine theta will be y over r, your cos theta will be equal to x over r, and your tangent theta will be equal to y over x. Okay, so you'll see, right, tangent theta, okay, now we want to prove something. What's the relationship between sine, cos, and tangent? Okay, you'll see, tangent theta, according to this property, is y over x. Okay, you see, uh, if I were to do sine theta divided by cos theta, so sine theta right now is y over r, right? Okay, y over r, uh, so I want to derive, I want to prove something right now. y over r over cos theta, x over r. Okay, if you all see y over r, over x over r, you can also write it as y over r divided by x over r. So we're doing basic uh, fractions. Uh. y over r times r over x. What will happen here? You can cancel it off. And you see, it's actually y over x. Okay, what I used over here was actually sine theta and cos theta. Can see it now? Okay, so what do we need to uh, know from here is the relationship between tangent, sine, and cos. Tangent theta is actually equals to sine theta over cos theta. So this is one of the property that you need to know. Okay, one of the property that you need to know. Okay. The second one that we're going to prove is this relationship. So back to this triangle, right? We know that this is a right angle triangle and your Sokatoa is uh, using right angle triangle only. Right angle triangle, what other relationship that we have learned? We know Pythagoras theorem, right? Which is your A square plus B square equals to C square. Let's go back to this triangle. We can, how do we write uh, Pythagoras? Theorem based on this, we can write it as so. This is the the first one. Is using Pythagoras, okay, our good friend. Theorem. We can write it as x square plus y square equals to r square. Okay, x square plus y square equals to r square. Okay, we want to find a relationship with back to sine, cos, and tangent. Huh? So, one thing you can do, you divide the entire equation by r squared. Okay, so what you will get is x squared over r squared over r squared plus y squared over r squared equals to r squared over r squared. This can also be rewritten as x over r square plus y over r square. r square over r square is equals to 1. Okay, what's x over r? Back to the equation. x over r is cos theta. Okay, why I write r here? <laughs> square. Okay, x over r is cos theta, y over r is sine theta. And then 1 is 1. So we actually, there's a relationship here also that this can be written as cos square theta plus sine square theta equals to 1. Okay, so this is another relationship that we can find between your trigo. Okay, do you need to memorize this? It's actually in your formula sheet in the exam. Uh, so you just need to know how to how to use it. 
Okay, but uh, it, it's good to know at the back of your head, size square theta plus cos square theta equals to, to 1. Okay, size square theta plus cos square theta equals to 1. You just keep, keep saying that uh, because you'll be applying it. Uh, so you don't have to keep going back to the, to the formula sheet to, to check. Lah. But there are a few properties. It's all derived from this sine square plus cos square equals to 1. Okay, I, I don't memorize as cos square plus sine square. Sine square plus cos square is is somehow rolls off the, the tongue easier. Lah. So just remember, sine square plus cos square equals to 1. Your theta can be any angle. Lah. Okay, so why do we need to know this? Uh, it's because later, the second part of this entire trigo, uh, what we'll be doing is that we'll be solving values of trigo. Okay, we want to solve trigonometric equation, meaning an equation like, let's say, sine x is equals to a specific value. Okay, sine x equals to 3.142, sine x equals to 0 0.5 sine x equals to negative 0 0.75. Okay, we'll give some values to it and we want to find what, what is the angle that gives you the answer. Okay, so for example, what if the question asks you to solve sine x, okay, the question, equals to 0 0.5. Okay, so you see at the at the bottom of the, the page, uh, sine x equals to 0 0.5. Okay, you need to know also, right, your angle, uh, uh, your, the, the term inside the trigo is always an angle. Okay? And the angle can be presented in degree form or in radian form. Okay, so this sine x, right, is not just a value there. It's an angle. Okay, which is also a value, but it's not just like some random integer there. Okay, if they can write it in x, they can write it in 2x, 3x, they can write it in theta, they can write it in, uh, yeah, any, any ways, but you need to know that the term inside is an angle. Okay, this one is an angle. You might want to write this down. Uh, in radian or degree. Okay, in radian mode or degree mode. Okay, the easy way to do this question, how we, we can solve this, right? Okay, but this won't give you the complete answer, but I'll, I'll teach you how to actually solve uh, this sine x equals to 0 0.5. So you all take out your calculator. Everyone take out your calculator. What we are trying to solve, right, is where is the angle that occurs for sine graph the value 0 0.5, okay? So if we were to, to draw it out, right? This is your sine graph, 0, 180, 360. Okay, if we were to see it based on this graph, right? We know that here is 1, here is negative 1. The value of 0 0.5 is somewhere here, right? somewhere here in the middle and see okay but now right what we are finding is this point of intersection here what exactly is this angle okay when my y equals to 0 0.5 so we know that there are two angles there okay but i want you all to use your calculator how you can find one of the value but this is called the base angle before this, I taught you all how to find the base angle, right? The one in relative to the x-axis. Okay, how we actually, the first step is actually to find the base angle. You, okay, all of you take out your calculator, you type shift sign, okay, shift sign, then your calculator should give you this symbol. The x, uh, you will get sine to the power of negative 1. Can see? sine to the power of negative 1, then you type in 0 0.5. You can put a bracket there also. Okay, and make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Huh? So you all need to check the, the top there that is in degree mode. If they ask you to write it in degree mode, then if you're solving it in degree mode, then a uh, degree, then make sure it's in degree mode. If it's in radian mode, then change it to radian mode. 
Okay, so you all see here, your answer that gives you is 30 degrees, right? All got it? 30 degrees? Ah, okay, so this is not your final answer. So this is actually your base angle, alpha. Okay, I'll teach you all a better way on how to do it. We won't use this textbook way at all. Okay, this textbook way is just the explanation of it. You base on your graph. We know one of the angle is 30 degrees because you see, right? Right now, over here, these two red points here uh, that, we, that we see, there are two answers to it. But how come my calculator only give me one answer? Ah, so, okay, I'll teach you all this ASTC way. So the reason why we learn ASTC also got reason. Right? Okay, so we know that one of the angle that we found is 30 degrees. This is what we call base angle. Okay, base angle, you all see uh, the symbol that I, I write over here is alpha. Okay, for now, you just need to, to know that if I put, if I were to shift sign a value at the back, it will only give me my base angle first. Not the final answer, the base angle only. So when you find your base angle, you write down first. You shift sign 30 degrees. Okay, another thing also, you don't care whether it's positive or negative because the question can also ask you sign x equals to negative 0 0.5. If it's negative 0 0.5, you just write it as shift sign 0 0.5 first to find your base angle. You don't put the negative sign inside. Okay, so remember this fact. Uh, this base angle is very, very important. So you just shift your trigo, your it can be sine, cos, or tangent. Then you put the value. Okay, in this case, you get 30 degrees. All right, I'm going to teach you all the method which is using ASTC. Okay, this is actually another example. So this is a uh, solving, yeah, solving tree go already lah. Okay, what we all need to do, write this down on your textbook, the, the space or, or your notebook. You want to, draw these four quadrants first okay you want to be drawing these four quadrants okay we learn astc right the value uh astc astc means where exactly the trigo is positive or negative okay so we'll be using it over here the value right value uh, it means your y value for example in this question is 0 0.5 okay so the first thing that you need to see is is it a positive or negative value okay if based on this graph uh, is uh where does my tree go Four in these four quadrants. Okay, by default, by default, uh, uh, if zero to three hundred sixty degrees, you will fall under two. Your base angle will fall under two quadrants. Right? Okay, you see, uh, now this sine x is positive zero point five. So what you need to just do. Where exactly in this four quadrant sign is positive? A, A right, because A is everything is positive. Huh? So you just draw a line over there first. Okay, just sketch any. Huh? We, we don't have to draw it uh, accurately. A, S, T, C. So the second positive for sign is over here. We are looking based on the 0 0.5 uh, the value 0 0.5 whether it's positive or negative okay i don't care about how big the value is or how small it is i just care about whether it's positive or negative okay so once you identify these two quadrants the next thing you want to do is put in your base angle 
base angle will always uh, be in relative to the x-axis. Okay, so you write here alpha and alpha. Okay, you write here alpha and alpha. It will never be to the y-axis. Right? So you got to remember this. Okay, write alpha on graph. Okay, your third step for you to find the angle, okay, for you to find the angle, I think in the previous one, somehow they never taught you all the four quadrants. Wait, 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 got, got, got. Uh, but they never really put into a formula. Okay, to find your theta, right, your, your, your answer, you have to remember this. For your first quadrant, to find your theta, theta is equals to alpha. It means the angle itself, whatever your base angle is. When I say alpha, right, I'm referring to base angle. Uh, it's a different thing from the, the answer that we want to find. Okay, base angle. In your second quadrant, so you see, uh, if I want to find uh, from, from here, here to here, because we calculate the, the angle is from the x-axis, then go anti-clockwise. The angle here, my theta, is equal to 180 degrees minus alpha. Okay, 180 degrees minus alpha. If my base angle falls in the, th the third quadrant, my angle will be 180 degrees plus alpha. Okay, and the last one, if my angle falls in the fourth quadrant, it will be 360 degrees minus alpha. Okay, I'll just show you why. Uh. Later, I'll erase it off. Follow this orange one. So if you see in, in my third quadrant, my alpha will be like this. So how do I calculate my angle? My angle is from here, go all the way to here. This is called your theta. So you see theta is how? 180 degrees is like that, right? Okay, until the second quadrant, one straight line, then plus alpha. Okay, see, right? Uh, okay, try, try, just try drawing it out. Okay, then you see if it's in the fourth quadrant, so let's say if I draw my, in here in the fourth quadrant, and my alpha is here, because it's towards the x-axis, then look at how my angle will be. Like this, this will be my theta. So if my alpha is like this, towards the x-axis, therefore my angle will be 360 degrees minus alpha. Okay, so you have to remember each quadrant, what are their angles. The first one, theta will be equal to alpha itself. Second quadrant, the theta, your angle that you need to find, will be equal to 180 minus alpha. Third quadrant, 180 degrees plus alpha. Fourth quadrant, 360 degrees minus alpha. Okay, I think this one your textbook never teach at all. Huh? So you all would need to write this, write this somewhere. The textbook uses the, the graph to, to solve it. Right? Okay, which I don't think is a very efficient method. It's just, it's good to know, but don't, don't use this method to solve during your exam. And if you see the exam paper also, the mark scheme, they just give you the answer only. So it, different teachers might use different methods uh, to, to teach you all. Okay, so I call this the ASTC method. I don't know what, what's the, the method called. Okay, but we'll do... Uh, yeah, in your exam, 100% will have one question of this that will come up. Okay, so this is how we solve trigo function. Okay, now back to this particular question. We know that our base angle is 30 degrees. Okay, our base angle is 30 degrees. So how do we find our theta? First quadrant and second quadrant. Therefore, our, our angle x will be equals to alpha which is 30 degrees and 180 degrees 
minus 30 degrees. So you will have two answer. 180 minus 30 degrees will be 150 degrees. Okay. Got it? Okay. We'll do we'll do a few more. Okay, we'll do a few more. Okay. Back to actually, sorry, before we move on, uh, back to the diagram. Uh, you you see the this diagram over here. Okay, this sign graph. Uh, so you see, does it make sense? Uh, now these two points of intersection, that it, the solution is actually the roots. Uh, where it intersect with each other at 0 0.5 when your y equals to 0 0.5. So technically what we are finding here, this is your 30 degrees and this is 150 degrees. Ah, but we won't use this uh, trigo graph method. We'll use the ASTC uh, method to solve your trigo function. Okay, so you see your textbook. If you just flip the, the couple of uh, what example, they will draw all the graph come out. It, it's not a very efficient method, and I don't recommend to use this method. So I won't teach this method. Okay, I won't teach this method. But you all can just refer to see like uh yeah, how, how they do it. Lah. Okay. So let's try work example 10. Let's try work example 10. Okay, how the question they will ask uh, is like this. Solve cos x equals to negative 0 0.4. Then they will give you a range, uh, a domain for your x. Okay, so they say from 0 to 360 degrees. I'll teach you all, all based on 0 to 360 degrees. So this, the 0 to 360 degrees also very, very important. Okay, so just now based on the first question, actually we are solving for 0 to 360 degrees. That means we're considering the quadrant from 0, your first quadrant, to the fourth quadrant, which is 0 to 360 degrees. Okay, now let's solve this question. Cos x equals to negative 0 0.4. First step, okay, first step, find your base angle. Okay, I want all of you to take out your calculator. Find what is alpha. Remember, find alpha, don't need to put in the negative or positive. Okay, technically it will always be positive. Huh? If there's a negative value such as this one, negative 0 0.4, don't put in the negative first. Okay, so you just shift cost 0 0.4. Okay, can you all just type in the chat? What do you all get? In terms of degrees. Okay, what's your alpha? 66.4 degrees, right? Ah, okay, 66.42 also. Yep. Okay, but uh, in exam, actually, the criteria for you all to write angle, you just need to write to one decimal place. Uh, so you don't need to write so many, but it's not wrong writing uh, yeah, more than, one, more than that. It's just that the, the final answer is required to present in just one DP. You'll see that, you'll see that in in the first page of the instructions that they give you. Okay, now we got uh, base angle 66.4 degrees. What we want to do next, so this one, first step, find alpha. Now, we draw our ASTC graph. Okay, all of you draw your four quadrants. You draw your four quadrants. Okay, I, I don't need to write the ASTC there. Uh. Just now was just for reference. You just need to know that it's ASTC. All students take care. Yeah? Okay, so I hope you're uh, now pandemic, right? So all students need to take care. Okay, so ASTC. This is a COVID-19 proof uh, graph quadrant. Okay, now the question to ask, cos x where does it happen? Which quadrant is negative for cos? Okay, I want you all to try. Which quadrant is negative for cos? A, S, Q, 
PC. Okay, which are the four quadrants? You normally have two if we consider zero to three hundred sixty degrees. Your second and your third one, right? Okay, your second and your third one, because A and C for the fourth quadrant. This is when your cost is positive. Now we want to find where is cost negative. Second quadrant, sine is positive, cost and tangent is negative. Third quadrant, tangent is positive, then the other two is negative. Understand how the ASTC graph works? Okay, we just need to define where is positive or negative. Okay. Define quadrant. Okay. Then put your alpha, put your alpha is always towards the x axis. Okay. Write your alpha down. Then your first step calculate your angle. Your angle in this case is your is the x. Huh? So second quadrant, how do you calculate second quadrant? For your theta, it is 180 degrees minus alpha. Right? Ah, second quadrant will always be 180 degrees minus alpha, no matter how, how you calculate it, no matter what, what your alpha value is. And your alpha value, you need to take note, it will always be at acute angle. Okay, we go in front, they never define it as base angle. Uh, some books they say reference angle is the same meaning, but your alpha will always be less than 90 degrees. Okay, and yeah, it's an acute angle. So if you calculate like your alpha more than 90 degrees or some, yeah, more than 90 degrees, then something is wrong already. So you just need to go double check it. Okay, if it's in the third quadrant, it will be 180 degrees plus alpha. Okay, 180 degrees plus alpha. All right, so we already calculated our theta. Now we go back to the question. Okay, we shift cost um, 0 0.4, you get 66.4. Now we find what is the x value. So x is your theta. So x is equals to 180 degrees minus, what was your alpha? 66.4 degrees and 180 degrees plus 66.4 degrees. Okay, go and calculate this. You will get 113.6 degrees and 246.4 degrees. Okay, this is your final answer. Okay, anyone unclear on this method? This is based on 0 to 360 degrees. Okay, just use this method. I will, okay, I will just sketch it out on, on the graph one, but don't use this method. Okay, don't use this method because, um, yeah, just, it will be pretty confusing. Uh, you all will need to use this for mathematics also. Uh. So ASTC, I don't think your math they, they teach you, but you can you can use it and it'll be very easy for you to, to calculate it. Okay, so you see, right? Um they want to you to find where is here's one, here's negative one. Where is your y negative 0 0.4? Here is negative 0 0.4. It means you want to find the point of intersection between here and here. Okay, so how, but how do we know, like, where, where exactly is this point? Okay, we know here is 90 degrees, here is 270 degrees. Okay, it's not, it's not very accurate, huh? but. Okay, so technically we are finding these two points here. All right. Uh, but how do we know whether it's plus, minus, or, yeah. So just use the ASTC method. Okay, but essentially, 
we are actually doing the same thing. We are finding the angle when your value is negative 0 0.4. Yep, definitely will be confusing at the start. You all need to, to, to practice a few more times. Okay, you need to practice a few more times. Okay, I'll go through all the examples first. Later, I will, I will go through some exercise with you all. Uh, yeah, I'll go through some exercise with you all. Okay, you all just write this down first. I'll make sure you all draw the graph out. Okay, there's one whole big space in your textbook. I don't know if you are scribble in your textbook or your notebook, but make sure you all draw this ASTC graph down because it's totally not in your textbook at all. Okay, all done? All right. Brendan, okay? Okay, draw this, huh? the ASTC graph. Okay. So, Okay, the more we expand, the more confusing it will be uh, because of the angle. Okay, because of the angle. Okay, let's go to work example 11 right now. Oops. Work example 11. So now we're going to expand. Instead of just finding X or Y, it can be anything uh, inside your, your angle. Now we want to solve tangent 2A equals to negative 1.8 for your degrees, 0 degrees. Your angle is A right now and to 180 degrees. Okay? Okay. This one got a few more extra steps. Okay? Got a few more extra steps. When you draw your... ASTC graph and when you find your theta. This will always be theta. Okay, now your theta is 2A. This is your angle. But we want to find what is A, not 2A. Okay, 2A, right? You we have to see how they define as A. Okay, how they define the, the domain of A. First step is the same. Find your alpha first. You don't care 2A or 3a, or 4a, or 5a, we just find alpha first. So alpha will be shift tangent, and then the value. Don't put your negative sign. So shift tangent, 1.8. Uh, they want it in degrees, right? Okay, 0 to 180 degrees. So we write down this, this base angle first. 60.9 degrees. Okay, find base angle. This will still be your first same step. Second step. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay, now you got extra steps. Because, right, you look into the question, uh, now they want you to, your tangent is 2A, but the domain that they give you is A only. Can you, can you all see this? Over here, the domain for the angle that they give you is only A. So what we need to do on the ASTC graph, right, is we need to make it to 2A or so because the question is asking us to solve for tangent 2A. So how do you do 2A? Very simple. This 0 degrees is also A. This 180 degrees is also A. So if I do 2A, right, what will happen? You multiply, you, you write the middle angle first, the, the one that you want to find. 2a will be 2 times 0. Okay, I just write down all the steps. 2 times 0 degrees, then 2 times 180 degrees, which will give you 2 times 0 will be 0 degrees, 2 times 180, this will be 360 degrees. Okay, you all need to do this step if your angle in the question, in the trigo, is not just like A, B, C, or X, Y, Z. Okay, there's a, there's a coefficient to it. Sometimes they might plus or minus also. So you need to find what is the domain first. Okay, so now the second step, find domain of angles 
for and why why do we use this uh, is for ASTC graph okay this 2a that we are finding for is actually for your ASTC uh. so now we don't use 0 to 180 degrees uh. our range of values for your angle 2a will be 0 to 360 degrees because if we take 0 to 180 degrees, right, it means we only consider half the, half the ASTC graph. Uh, that means the bottom part, we don't need to care already. Okay, so 0 to 360 degrees, well, technically, it's back to the normal again, uh, right? Uh, because normally, we will take four quadrants also, uh, 0 to 360 degrees. So don't always assume uh, that it's 0 to 360 degrees. You have to see what they give you for the domain, for the, for the angle. Okay, now on, so this is the extra step if it's not just uh, uh, when, yeah, if, if there's a coefficient to it. All right, so let's draw our ASTC graph right now. Okay, let's draw this. Okay, ASTC graph. So where is your alpha? Okay, where's the base angle supposed to be at? First quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. Okay, can you all just type in the chat? My tangent is a negative value. ASTC. Okay, where is my uh, base angle supposed to be at? Anyone? Tangent is negative. A S. C. Okay, Venice. Ah, second and fourth. Very good. Okay, so second is where your tangent is negative because only sine is positive there. Then over here. Then how we draw our alpha towards the x axis. Okay, so second one. Choose quadrant alpha is at. Okay. All right. Now we do same as just now again. Okay. Same as just now. So what is the angle here? If second quadrant and fourth quadrant, my alpha is 60.9. So second quadrant. Second quadrant is 180 degrees minus alpha. Fourth quadrant is 360 degrees uh, minus alpha. Okay, to find my angle. Okay, so now my angle is 2A. Uh, so I write, write it back as 2A. Okay, write it back as 2A. So third one is calculate the angle. 2A equals to 180 minus alpha. So what's 180 minus alpha? You just straight, you can straight away write the answer. 180 minus 60.9, which is equals to 119.1 degrees and 360 degrees minus alpha, which is 60.9, you'll get 299.1 degrees. Okay. This is not your, your final answer. Okay. This is not your final answer. Uh, you need to find what is A. Okay. You need to find what is A. A is equals to, now you need to divide it by 2. Okay. Divide it by 2. So your final answer, you 119.1 divide by 2 which is, okay, supposedly 59.6, but your textbook, right, 59.5, okay. Okay, so you write 59.6 degrees, 299.1, you divide by 2, 149.6 degrees. Okay. 
or according to your textbook is 59.5 and 149.5 Alright, so this is how you do, you solve a trigo question. Okay, I think before we move on, uh, because it's, it's time already, before we move on, we need, you all, you all need to practice the, the basics first, okay, for today. Okay, so uh, another five more minutes, I will stop the recording first, then I'll tell you all what else to, to do. Hold on, uh, I stopped the recording first.